Hello, this is Buttermix from Mix Training, and today I'm gonna show you how to create geometry using bobs. There is no coding. All right, so as I said in the intro, there will be no coding in this video. Uh, well, the reason is, as some people might say, why don't you just do this in bags? Well, you could do it. Of course, you can do it in Bex. And the thing is, not everyone is is a coder. Not everyone likes to code. So for all that, for all those people, they just like to do it visually. There is Bobs, and Bobs is the visual way to do Bex, which is actually Bex started as Bobs because Bobs means Bex operators. So you can still use Bob's. It's actually totally valid. It's totally using Houdini. And we're gonna see how we can use that to do some of the things that are commonly in the recent years have been doing been uh, have been done with Bex. So let's do it now. Alright, so we are going to do uh, this in in uh in this video this is going to be the final result but we're going to start with something simpler all right so you can see this is really simple and uh let's go and start with the simplest example that we're going to do and let me start with a new fresh scene with so you i'm not going to be cheating here so i'm just going to create a geometry node to be uh, to start off and uh, inside here we don't need anything to start here so we're going to just use uh, an attribute bob and the difference between the different bobs you can see if i go to the uh, um, houdini menu and you can see there's an attribute bob point bob primitive bob and ver vertex bob those bobs are exactly the same as the attribute bob the only thing it changes is this value here but i don't like to use the other ones i just use the attribute bob because that's that's the main bob so let's call this create poly polygon polygon all right so inside here it's going to be very simple what we need to create so if you think about it or, or let's let's see an example let's create a grid and if we create a grid with just one simple polygon let's just reduce this to uh smaller and reduce the rows and columns to two you can see now we have just one polygon here and what we have here is we have the vertex here or the point here at the uh, each one of these corners we have the polygon which is the actual face that we can select here and we also have something called vertices in 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 uh, houdini which if we select here you can see it as these are these little thingies, maybe you can see them in this. There, there you go. You can see this this pink circle there, which are using Houdini mostly for texturing. But we need those three elements. We need the point, we need the polygon, and we need the vertex. So that's what we're gonna create inside this guy. So let's just delete that polygon. And here, what we need is uh, a few nodes. We need one add primitive node so let's create an add primitive which is basically kind of be the handle for the whole geometry let's consider this the main node and we need an add point uh node which is gonna add a point right so how do we where do we connect these guys do we connect it to any of this actually we don't we don't even really need this guy uh for the geometry because we're gonna create it from scratch so the last thing we need here to actually see something uh, we need a vertex as i say so let's uh, create an art at vertex and vertex is basically kind of the one that's going to receive these guys here so think of this as the output kind of a uh, so the handle as i said is going to be the the primitive of or the geometry the main geometry considered that uh, so we're going to put that, no, no, sorry, 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 not the handle. The handle is the geometry, uh, the geometry number when it created. In this case, we have no geometry, so handle zero is okay. Here, we're going to plug the primitive number, which is this primitive, and the PT num here. And if we do that, we should already have a point uh, in the uh, out here. Let's see what we have here. 
All right, so uh, I don't see the point here. I don't, there's no point because I forgot to change this to run over uh, detail, which just runs this once. Uh, since we were running it uh, by default on points, which is we don't have any points. Uh, we're gonna put this in detail. And now you can see there is one point already created. Let me make these points bigger in the viewport. Is this someone? Yeah. So there you go. You can see there's one point uh, created. So what we need to do now, what we need to do now is create more points. Just We can just duplicate those two nodes there. Let's create four of these guys and just change the uh, coordinates of this. So the first one is at zero. So let's move the other one, uh, one on, on X. You can see now here's one point here. All the points are actually bunched there. The third point, let's move it one in X and one in C. One and one, actually the other way. One to do go over here, minus one. And the fourth one, I'm not gonna move it in X, but uh, move it uh, minus one on C. And you can see now we have that. Actually, sh uh, by default here, the add primary creates an open polygon which right now we actually have a, a line. We created a line. This is effectively a polyline in Houdini. If we change this to closed polygon, now if uh, I, I was in, in wireframe, you can see now, you can see the, the points that we created here in the corner and the vertex there, which is the, uh, the uh, pink circle there. And that's how you create geometry with bobs. You don't need to do this in, uh, in Bex, you can do it in, in, sorry, you can do it in Bobs if you feel more comfortable using just nodes instead of coding. This is a perfect way to do it. Uh, so let's see a more complex example. So let's go here and let's create the mocap, uh, mocap biped, which has some animation on it. And you can see, let me hide the points. You can see here's the mocap. But it has some animations, walk, run, uh, waiting, standing, zombie. Let's use zombie. So it's just, you can see it there. And let's create another geometry. And let's call this zombie because that's what we are doing. And let's uh, object merge, uh, just the geometry here. Object zombie. Uh, no, here, actually, mocha biped. There is a geo node here uh all right so we have that here now let's uh, change our selection because we are seeing the verses there so we have the geometry here uh this context now we don't need this guy so we're gonna do the same thing we did uh for the other one but we are going to do uh, a few things uh different so let's just scatter some points scatter points on this and that's gonna work uh actually no I actually want to uh, scar this by texture because if you see this guy, uh, space five here, you can see it has a texture or has UVs uh, rather. Uh, so we can actually stick the points to the model just by uh, tweak, uh, putting the models in the texture. If you see here, the points change at every frame because the geometry is changing. But if you change this for uh, from density to in texture space, now you can see there's a few points there, but if we put the density higher here, now you can see we have a bunch of points and these points actually are not going to move. They stick to the geometry because they use uh, the UV coordinates to know where to be on the model. So if you ever want to just have a bunch of points on top of your model and you can see the, uh, the, the, the shoes have a lot more points because they are bigger in texture space, we can actually uh, modify that if we go here and select uh, all these parts of the model and make them smaller and see the scatter you can see now we have uh, the points are more evenly distributed uh, along the whole model so if you ever want to just stick points into your model just using the texture coordinates it's a bit a really nice way to have your points not uh, swim around in your model so now after this, we're going to create our, an attribute Bob and this is going to create uh, connections. This is a common effect that uh, people do in, uh, in Bex. But now this time we're not going to change this to detail because we already have points and we want to run this operation on the points uh, in this case, even though we are actually going to create geometry. 
So what we're gonna do is create a point cloud find, uh, point, point, point cloud find here. And this is gonna uh, use this point cloud we already have. So that comes in up input one, which is basically these inputs, I mean, uh, these inputs here. So that's where we are plugging that. Um, and then we're gonna p pass the position of, of the of the of the points here as well. So what this node is gonna find, it's gonna find some points in a radius and, and how much points here. So what I'm gonna do is just put this to one to search radius of one and it's gonna uh, find a maximum of 10 points. All right, so the result of this, which is gonna be an array, uh, the, the, the numbers the, or the points are gonna find up, gonna put them in a list. So this list, we're gonna uh, process it with a for each. I'm gonna do it with the uh, this for each uh, loop. And this loop is gonna be really simple. It's not gonna be uh, hard at all. So this specs are an array in, which you can see, we can plug that because this is an array. And here, what you're gonna do is just add a primitives to the point, to each one of the points, we're gonna join them with the other points that are gonna be found. So the since we already have the points, we don't need the add point node. We The only thing we need here is the vertex point, uh, add the vertexes and add a primitive because we, we are creating geometry on top of this. So we need the primitive and then this element out is each one of these points uh, in the loop. Uh, it's looping through all the array and it's spitting one at a time here. So this one is gonna be the point number and this one now is gonna be the primitive as we did before. And now let me just change the selection here and you can see we already connected all those points. That was simple, right? We, we didn't write any lines of code or we wrote them visually. So, and and now we can see, we can if we go to the PC fine and we put the max points lower, you can see we can connect more of those. You can see right now we're just connecting two, two points. So this point here, see this point here is connected to this and this and this and this. So that's what's happening. If we put this higher, it's gonna connect more and more and more and more points. Uh, the radius, I think, is not affecting us much here because the points are pretty close. The only last thing I did with this at the end is just put some color to make it look uh, cool. Color. And change this to bounding box and looks pretty fun. And now we should have uh, a sound bit that it's walking and it's connected by these little uh, primitives. And you can see since we use the scatter to scatter on texture, the points are not jumping around. They are sticking to their uh, place and uh, the, the structure is not jumping around. And if, we, if you didn't do that, I can show you actually if we scatter by density, I can see here we're scattering by density and we put that in there. Here you can see this is gonna be jumping all over the place. You can see the geometry is switching around every single frame. So it depends on what you need. Some people want to have that and some people don't. And uh, the only the other thing is this is really fast because this is basically BEX. So if we do like uh, 10 million points, you can see it's going to be really fast. It's going to take what? One, two, three, four, five seconds. And that's a bunch of points, 10 million points. So it was really fast. If I do just 1 million, it's basically instant. Uh, so there you go. That's alrighty. That was it. That was simple, right? No backs, no code, just notes and fun stuff. Uh, so there you go. If you are not a fan of coding, if you think you all, always need to code in Houdini, you don't. You can use Bob's. He's using the major studios to create amazing stuff. It's used to create all the shaders in Houdini. So. You can use it and take advantage of it if you are not a coder and you are just don't want to learn it or or this can be your path to learning Bex because from this you can go to Bex and learn more stuff. All right, guys, I uh, will see you later. I hope you enjoyed this one and let's keep learning together. Cheers.